This video is brought to you by Nebula. In the last few days, it's been reported that BBC offices in India have been searched in tax surveys, and journalists have had their phones seized. This comes a few weeks after a BBC documentary aired in the UK questioning the role of Prime Minister Narendra Modi in the Gujarat riots of 2002, in which more than 1,000 people died. So what did the BBC documentary say? What was Modi's specific role in the Gujarat riots? And why specifically is the BBC being raided? Now, to understand this scandal, we need to understand the 2002 Gujarat riots. And to understand this, we need to go back another decade to 1992. This is where the story starts. In essence, discussion in India had turned to the Babri Masjid Mosque in the northern city of Ayodhya, where a mosque had been built all the way back in the 16th century. Hindu extremists argued that the site was the birthplace of the Hindu deity Rama, and that the building of the mosque demonstrated that the land had been taken from them by Muslims. On the 6th of December 1992, a political rally got out of hand, and the mosque was demolished by a huge mob. In the ensuing riots and clashes, around 2,000 people, mostly Muslim, died in what was described at the time as one of the worst religious clashes since the partition of 1947. There were claims that a prominent member of the Hindu Nationalist Party, the Bharayita Janata Party, or the BJP, mobilised the mob and just a few years later the BJP came to power. Unfortunately, this religious violence continued in 2002, when a train carrying mostly Hindus was set on fire in Godhra, a predominantly Muslim area. Blaming Muslims for this, Hindus went into the town and rampaged, raped and looted. The most intense violence lasted for a few days, but violence more generally persisted for weeks. Now, this is where the BBC documentary comes in. Narendra Modi, who is now the Prime Minister of India, was, and still is, a member of the BJP. In fact, he wasn't just a member, he was the Chief Minister of Gujarat, where the violence took place. As such, he had a lot of power, specifically in relation to the actions of the police. Last month, the BBC produced a documentary entitled India, the Modi Question. As part of this, Modi is put under the spotlight, specifically in relation to his actions in 2002. As part of the documentary, the BBC spoke to Jack Straw, the British Foreign Minister at the time. He's on record saying that there were serious claims that Modi tried to restrict the actions of the police. He went further and accused Modi of tacitly encouraging the Hindu extremists. The documentary also discusses documents found by the BBC which demonstrate that UK diplomats at the time thought that the violence in Gujarat showed all the hallmarks of an ethnic cleansing. The BBC don't just look at events from 2002 either. They also have an episode dedicated to Modi's actions since his re-election in 2019, focusing on some of his most controversial policies, such as the revocation of Kashmir's autonomy and his Citizenship Amendment Act, in which Muslims from certain countries were not eligible for citizenship. The documentary was released by the BBC on the 17th of January in the UK. It was not scheduled to be broadcast in India, with the Indian Ministry of Information and Broadcasting claiming that the documentary was propaganda and reflected a colonial mindset. In fact, the Indian government actually invoked emergency powers and ordered clips from the documentary to be censored on social media platforms, including YouTube and Twitter. One night in particular, the authorities cut power in a student union hall in Jawaharlal Nehru University as it was being reported that they were going to screen the documentary. This act actually emboldened students at other universities to screen the documentary. The police were not about to let this happen though, and ranks of riot police stormed Jamia Malia Islamia University with tear gas. This story doesn't end here though, as in the last week, the Indian tax authorities have started a tax survey in BBC offices in New Delhi and Mumbai. The BBC's World Service reported that the police did have a warrant for the search, and that employees' phones had been taken. Defending the actions of the police, a spokesperson for India's income tax department denied to the FT that the raids were a search operation and claimed that the media had wrongly reported that it was. 
On Thursday this week, the Indian authorities searched BBC offices for the third day in a row, claiming that the probe was due to deliberate non-compliance with transfer pricing rules and the BBC's alleged vast diversion of profits. Obviously, the timing of this search is highly suspect, following the Indian government's clear resentment of the BBC's recent documentary. Additionally, the fact that officials have taken phones off of BBC journalists adds to the questionable nature of the search. According to income tax laws, only books of accounts and documents can be impounded. Phones and laptops cannot be seized at this stage. It's highly likely that Indian authorities are trying to intimidate the BBC into silence and from not making another documentary critical of the Modi government. The BBC has said that they hope the situation is resolved as soon as possible, and the British Foreign and Commonwealth Office has stated that it's closely monitoring the situation. This situation adds weight to a wider argument that India's democracy is backsliding. The Editors Guild of India have claimed that the government has used tax surveys to intimidate and harass press organisations that are critical of government policies. Another good example of the use of fraudulent tax inspectors was last year, when tax inspectors investigated Oxfam, who fund and support independent news outlets. Incidents like this are why India's ranking on press freedom indices have fallen. In 2018, India had a score of 56.8 out of 100 in the Press Freedom Index. By 2022, this had fallen to 41.6. In real terms, this means that it dropped from the problematic section all the way down to very serious. Additionally, Reporters Without Borders ranked India 150th worldwide in 2022, which is eight places lower than the year before. Clearly, this incident is not an isolated one, and it reflects a wider trend in Indian politics. It's too early to say how this incident will affect UK-Indian relations, as the search is still ongoing, and there hasn't yet been any conclusions from it. Although, considering the status of the BBC as a well-respected neutral state broadcaster, it's unlikely that this saga will have a positive impact on relations between the two countries. Anyway, this is far from the only mysterious and unusual thing going on at the moment, and our friend Neo has a whole series, Under Exposure, which tackles topics from what really happened at the Bin Laden raid, the truth behind the MH17 investigation, or how the Twin Towers were built. That's a series exclusive to Nebula, the streaming service we're building with a whole bunch of our creator friends, many of whom you're likely to already know and love. If you sign up to Nebula, you'll find all of our videos ad-free and occasionally released before YouTube. On top of that, you'll also find a whole bunch of TLDR explainers exclusively available on Nebula, plus an extended version of our show, The Daily Briefing, every single weekday. There's way more than just TLDR, though. There's other original series we know you'll love, like Real Life Law's Incredible Modern Conflicts, which breaks down contemporary disputes from all over the world. Extremities from Wendover Productions, which uncovers some of the world's most remote places. And of course, Neo's Underexposure. All of these are only available on Nebula, just like our extended daily briefing and a whole bunch of other exclusive TLDR content, which will never make it to YouTube. If you want to sign up, then use the link in the description so that they know you came through us. That helps us out a whole lot, as does watching on Nebula more generally. So thanks for signing up, and we'll see you on Nebula.